Okay, I thought I'd show you my latest project. I forgot to. I never can't remember to do this stuff till it's too late. Like, oh, I should have been videoing that. Man, this is a sawmill I bought, a portable sawmill. I've been you know, been setting for a long time. A friend of mine went to school with him. So this I'll be taking to Alaska to build my cabin with. So it's been setting out, and so everything which I knew it was going to be was just rusted shut. These little, you can see these little slots right there they didn't weld those all the way so they filled up with water and so this is supposed to slide so all this would just brush it shut and these water got in all those i finally got those all this is a simple whole way to get that down so uh, i'm gonna put a little bigger motor on it. it does have a nice trailer set up i'm gonna make an extension for the trailer to to uh so i can cut longer these I like to cut 16 foot pieces. There's a stove that's going with me. Actually, this is a wood cook stove I grew up with. That we had as kids, my mom cooked on them still. Just in excellent condition. I was surprised they were sitting apart for 50 years. It was as good as it was. So, yep, yeah, this is just kind of a short. So, I've got to lengthen the axles because the tires were up. And Got to make it wish ready so I can pull up my four wheeler, get it out in the in the back country. So as I progress and get it closer to going, I, uh, I'll keep you posted. And hopefully, I'll, I'll get it painted before before I bring it up. So I'm gonna plan on turning it up on the side on the trailer. All this stuff will come off. These will come off. Turn it up on the side, and then if I got a nice wide enough trailer, I can pull my. I'll put the head up on the front, and then pull my skid steer on beside that chain everything down and that will have a sawmill and skid steer when I get there. So and probably that welder will one of those welders will pull up with me too. So that's the plan. Here's my progress for today. I got this all back together, got everything freed up. Knocked it off there a while ago. I've got to order that little wheel right down there. So I stand up so that cost me fifty bucks. I got these four corner posts that were on there. I got those off and had a two and five sixteenths ball hitch on it, which everything I got two inch, my forward was two inch, so I gotta finish cutting that tomorrow. I got too much wind now. So I'm gonna start a fire. So there's my two inch hitch I had laying around. Lucky for me. So I'm working on it. It's gonna be a project, but I'll have her going here before too long. So, Alright, continue this tomorrow. Okay, I got the hitch changed out. It's not pretty, but there's no cutoff wheels to be had in town from a little four inch grinder. So now I've got to extend that axle out. <coughs> Excuse me. Because for one thing, it's not square. You can see the back tire is closer to the frame than the front of the tire. Plus it's hitting there and I've actually got that wheel on backward just to get it home because it's dish was too deep for it. So. The original wheels were just totally rusted out and no good. So, okay, I'm gonna pick it up on the forklift and get those loosened off, and, or the springs taken off, and see what I can get done here. Got the axles taken off and got them cut. I actually thought that was solid, but yeah, pretty thin, like maybe eight inch. Just so happened in my scrap pile I had this. I was wanting something just a little bit longer, but that's what I have, and it just fits over that nice and snug. And so I'll put a brace on it. That'll extend it out three inches. That actually probably will be enough. I did dig through my stuff and find one cutoff wheel, so I was able to get this all done. So, okay. On to the next step. And this is an eighth, eighth of an inch difference here, thickness. So I put this eighth inch shim stock in there and clamped the two together on each end, which then made this, made this bottom piece here, the axle itself run run straight and true with this straight edge right here. So then lined up the edges and it'll be good enough for a sawmill trailer. So now yeah, get it welded up. Yeah, I'm not sure how the welding is gonna show up. Walk out the phone or whatever. I don't know.
was so thin, so it's not going to really be a problem holding everything up. I'll tell you what, it is hot. I'm going to go back to Alaska. I'm sweating. First time in the year. I got. I don't know if you can tell or not, but the axles, the spring purchase, well, bottom line is these spring hangers are three quarters of an inch off from that cross member right there. So I've had to kind of scoot them around a little bit to make them square with the cross member. I know when I picked it up that one tire was cocked compared to the frame. It went straight with the frame, so I think that was probably the problem, but I'm not going to cut the spring hangers loose to do that because I'm probably never gonna pull on the highway if I do it's not gonna be very far and if I do it's gonna be straight so it'll be straight enough for this okay got them mounted the one on the left is square with the frame this one is towed in just a little bit so I'm guessing the axle must have been bent that's probably why it was like that when I took it apart so that's the way it's gonna be I'm not going to take it all back apart and try and straighten the axle out since it's just not going to be towed on the highway. But that does give me more clearance now. And a little bit wider for a little bit more stability while towing, even with the four-wheeler, because you get that carriage on top, it's a little little top-heavy. But nope, that'll work. That little, one more thing done. Now I'm waiting on parts. Okay, I got everything pretty much rebuilt on this thing. I changed some things. This, uh, I reached up and done that one day to pull myself up and pull the carriage off, the head off. So I put this little thing right here that runs over. I left this open so I can get the head off if I need to, but you can see that it runs. And now it won't come off. So uh, I've got to do some work on these convoluted blade guys. The one side of the blade's quarter inch difference in height than the other one and they're both high as they'll go. I guess I can drop the other one down a little bit, but then it's gonna be pulling too much on the top part. So I'm gonna probably change that. I end up putting a centrifugal clutch on it versus what they had. So it makes it a little faster. I'm not sure if that'll work or not. Just put a brand new motor on it. I just went to Harbor Freight and got these. They had them on sale for 169 bucks. It's one more horsepower than the, than the other one. So change that that was flopping I'm still not satisfied that's gonna work I'll probably end up changing these these are the dogs they go together you know sound like a good idea but you really need those up when you roll a log on and in that case these are in the way so that's probably gonna get changed too because I've I've rolled logs off the backside on another mill you gotta have a way to stop it especially with putting them off the bobcat so so there was a uh, I put these back here. They've got another jack like that that goes on this corner. Uh, I'll have to see if I need to put another one on the front or not. I don't know yet. Okay, I'm going to pause it here and I'm going to get everything fired up and uh, see if I can get the camera stand up. Hopefully the wind won't blow it over and we'll see what happens. You guys will be the first ones to witness. Of course, i got to change that too because I literally can't reach that. So that'll be changed to get it down here where I can I can do it. So okay, I'm gonna pause it here. Yeah, and I just remembered I can level the blade with the uh, cable adjustment. Forgot about that. So here we go.
Hey, yeah, it worked. I still think I'm gonna redo a few things and we got that slope and it's like the lap siding. So I have to adjust the head on that, but that can be done now that I remember how to do it. So a little more tweaking on it. Uh, this I noticed the corner up here is caught on the I'll show you. I think somewhere in here this yeah right there that caught on the this this caught on this right here so I'll have to uh, change that out a little bit. I'm, I'm just gonna redo these. I just, I don't like them, so I'm gonna redo them. But, hey, it seemed to have, you know, it's not a very big log, but still, it cut through it okay. So, I guess it'll probably be fine. A little more tweaking, it'll work. So, you got to witness the first cut. So, there we go. Thank you for watching. Okay, this is the final video of my uh, mill. I forgot to take it while I was in the barn. I got it down here. I gotta put my other project in the barn. I'll show you in a minute. But I changed the scale over here where I could see it. That's covered up as a hand crank, and now it's gonna be cranked with a uh, cordless drill. So that cranking up and down don't work, plus you can't reach it. I changed the the um, backstop and the dogs here so that they both come up at the same time. I don't know if you can see that or not. See that one comes up same time this one. So now you're your dog is actually laying down, so when you roll a log across here, it stops here. Otherwise, they, before they were moving both at the same time, and that would just let it roll off the backside, and I've done that. That's not any fun. So that made that a lot simpler. And uh, now I've got this corner jack. i got another one up in the barn. forgot to put it on there. So, so the next video of this, I will be doing some sawing. I added extension. I think I showed that on there before. And got the new motor mounted, and... But for now, I got it out of the barn and I will get with the next project. So I will show you that in later.